My name is Bob Stanley Smith. I live in Canberra, Australia. I've lived here my entire life, and I really like the place. My favorite pizza restaurant is in this town. I always want to try something new, but I can never decide on what. I always end up ordering pepperoni pizza. Last year, my sister moved to Germany to live with our aunt and uncle for a year. She wants to learn German and study at a dance school. I didn't think I would miss her, but I do. I will admit it is kind of nice not having her around. She was always practicing dancing. It was hard to relax because there was always music playing or she was using the TV to watch dance videos. My name is Jill Bethany Williams. I'm 14 years old. My father is a wildlife biologist. His main job is to go around and make sure that when cities or companies build new buildings, they don't hurt endangered animals. Last month, a city was planning to build a new mall near a forest. My father had to go and survey the land for endangered animals, and he took me with him. We were camping outside for one week. We set traps for animals and examined all of the local plants. We found out that there was a species of endangered owl that lived in the trees of that forest. In the end, the city couldn't build their mall in that forest and I helped protect endangered animals. My name is Mittens. I'm a cat that lives in Tokyo. Many people think that cats don't like living in the city, but I love it. During the day, my owners have to leave the apartment to go to work. It's very hot outside. They get all hot and sweaty and smell bad when they go to work. Then they spend 8 hours in an office, or selling shoes, or arresting criminals. I'm not sure what my owners jobs are. When they come home, they are always tired and barely have enough energy to feed me. Do you know what I do all day? I lounge around in air conditioning and play with things I find on the floor. I leisurely eat my lunch and take naps in the warm sunlight. I'm living my best life. My name is John Michael Taylor. I'm 29 years old. You've probably never heard of me, but I'm very famous in the dancing world. Last year, I got my big break and was in a very famous music video. After that, my social media really started taking off. I have over 100 million followers on my TikTok account and around 50 million on my Instagram. Lots of companies ask me to use their products on my social media accounts, and I make a lot of money every time I advertise for them. It is a full-time job. I have to come up with new dance moves and posts every day. If I lose followers, Companies won't ask me to advertise for them. His name is Ned Nathaniel Wright. He's 16 years old. Two years ago, Ned was really into baseball. He was a pretty good baseball player and all of his friends loved playing baseball. 
the baseball club was really busy, though, and Ned's grades started to slip, so he decided to change clubs. The soccer club seemed a lot easier and less demanding, and Ned still wanted to play a high-energy sport, so he joined the soccer club. All in all, he likes soccer a lot more. There's a lot more activity, and his teammates are really cool. The only problem is that Ned is terrible at soccer. He's been playing for two years and hasn't scored a goal. He's still having a lot of fun, though. Kevin Albert Robinson is a 34-year-old restaurant owner. Last year, he quit his job at a high-end Italian restaurant and went into business for himself. He spent all of his savings and bought a small restaurant on a busy street. Instead of hiring experienced chefs, Kevin decided to hire highly motivated young people and teach them how to be great chefs. At first, it was extremely hard, and he had to let go of a few lazy employees. However, Kevin had taken hundreds of cooking classes and learned from the best chefs, so he knew how to train his staff. After a year of very hard work, he has one of the best restaurants in New York. He's proud of everything he's accomplished. He's a 15-year-old teenager named Tim Martin Walker. Tim recently joined an eSports team and it turns out that one of the girls on the team lives in the same city as him. They started chatting online and eventually began calling each other. This weekend, they're going to meet up at a restaurant and go on a date. Tim is very nervous. He's never been on a date before and isn't sure what he should do or what he should wear. He asked all of his friends for advice, but they all gave him bad advice. One friend told him to wear a tuxedo and rent a limo, which seemed like a little much for a first date. Tim is just going to dress nicely and try to have a good time. Randy Phillips is 20 years old and lives in Wellington, New Zealand. Last year, he went to college in Canberra, Australia. He liked the college well enough, but he spent his whole life in Canberra and decided it was time to spread his wings. He did a little bit of research and looked at other colleges. He decided he wanted to try living in a foreign country but didn't want to learn another language. New Zealand is pretty close to Australia, so he could travel back and forth easily. He enrolled at Wellington University in New Zealand and started going there six months ago. He loves living in New Zealand. The countryside is beautiful and he's making many new friends. Her name is Betty Crocker, and she's 11 years old. Betty has been having a pretty rough time recently. There were a lot of wildfires in her area, and her school and house burned down. No one was hurt, but now Betty has to live in a hotel. She's staying positive, though. The hotel has a swimming pool, and she's going to a new school that is actually nicer than her old school. Her parents are stressed, but they had insurance, 
so they can buy a new house. Betty and her brothers are helping her parents design the house. Everyone will have their own room, and it's going to be more modern than their old home. Right now, things are pretty tough, but they're looking up. She's a 30-year-old nurse named Tina Felicity Gray. She used to work in a public hospital, but one of the doctors decided to open their clinic, and she went with them. Working in the private sector is a lot easier than in the public. The pay is better too. The clinic she works at is much smaller than the public hospital. There are only three doctors working there and a dozen or so nurses. Her clinic specializes in respiratory sicknesses, like colds and bronchitis. Tina gets to spend more time doing the jobs she likes and focusing on the patients that really need her help. She also really likes her co-workers. This new job has been good for her and she looks forward to work every day. Diane Khatri is 19 years old and lives in New Delhi, India. She's going to be graduating from high school very soon and is thinking about where to go to college. Her family is very wealthy, so she can go anywhere she wants and study anything she wants. She's always loved theme parks and wants to be one of the people who design them. She also loves Paris, France, and wants to live there and learn French. She's decided to go to an architecture school in Paris. It's a private school and hard to get into. Her parents are paying for tutors to help her study French and make sure she can pass her entrance exams. She's very excited about her future. Pepper Julia Mensa is a 39-year-old Nobel Prize winner who lives in Accra, Ghana. She is the head of the physics department at Ghana's top college and also serves as a science advisor to the government. Since Pepper won a Nobel Prize, her research has received a lot of funding from the government and other private organizations. She has been able to conduct lots of groundbreaking research in physics. She still loves teaching at the college but she's found that most of her time is being spent in the laboratory. Since she's so busy in the laboratory, the college has assigned 10 students to be her teaching assistants. Now, those students teach her lower level classes, Professor Tuthi has had a busy year. Last year, a car factory expanded its operations and drained its swamp. Fortunately for Tuthi, a group of environmentalists caught him and moved him to the Everglades National Park. At first, it didn't like the park. It didn't know where to hunt and there were a lot of other alligators that it had to share the water with. The other alligators fought Toothy a lot, but Toothy was bigger and stronger, so it eventually carved out a nice spot for itself in the swamp. It is the king of its little area in the swamp, and the other alligators all run from Toothy. It misses its old swamp but it can never go back. It'll make do for now.
Mr. Can Can is a female parrot that lives in Vancouver, Canada. Summer has finally rolled around in Canada, and that means that Can Can needs to get rid of some feathers. It started molting a week ago, and it does not enjoy the experience. Its old feathers are all falling out, and Can Can has to constantly pull them out or rub against the bars of its cage to make them fall out. Can Can is always itchy and is very cranky. Last week, Can Can almost bit one of its owners when they were feeding it. Its cage is also dirtier than usual because Can Can doesn't want to come out when its owners try to clean the cage. It's usually a good bird, but right now, it is miserable. Its name is Fido. It's an American dog living in Rome, Italy. Its owners decided to take a trip all over Europe, and they'll be taking Fido along with them. They have to get a small cage to haul Fido around in. Taking a dog on a plane is expensive and a huge hassle, so they're going to travel by trains all over Europe. First, they're going to the Louvre in France. No dogs are allowed, so Fido has to wait outside. Then they're going to Buckingham Palace in England. They don't let common dogs in the palace, so Fido has to wait outside. Finally, they're going to Familia Sagrada in Spain. Dogs can't go into that church so Fido will be waiting outside with one of his owners. Chimpy is a monkey on a mission. A long time ago, a bunch of filthy humans moved into its forests. The humans cut down all the trees, took all the water, and built a bunch of houses where Chimpy's forest used to be. After that, whenever Chimpy went into the city to look for food, the disgusting humans would get angry and chase it away. Some of the humans threw things at it. Some of them set traps to catch it. Chimpy was too clever for them, though. She always managed to escape. Chimpy has gathered many monkeys together, and tomorrow they will go and break all the windows and throw trash everywhere. It will be a great day for the monkeys. Their names are Jin and Len. They're 14 years old. They're very excited today because they're going on a field trip. Their class is taking a trip to the museum, and they're going to stay there overnight. Jin's group is going to sleep around the dinosaur exhibitions. She's looking forward to staying up late and telling scary stories around all the dinosaur bones and statues. Lynn's group is staying in the ancient Greece section of the museum. Lynn is fairly disappointed with his group's assigned sleeping area. He isn't interested in ancient Greece. He thinks the art is basic, the mythology is complicated, and the history is long and boring. He wants to be with Jin's group. Their names are Tom and John. They're 45-year-old factory workers who live in Philadelphia, America. This winter, they're going to take a trip to Colorado to go skiing in the Rocky Mountains. 
John has been skiing his whole life and is really excited, but Tom has only been skiing once, and he broke his arm when he went. John keeps telling Tom that he'll teach him how to ski, and they'll only go on the easy slopes. Tom is agreeing to go on the skiing trip because he knows how much John loves skiing, but he is positive he will break his arm again. Just to be safe, John is going to put his cell phone in a tough case and always be ready to call for help. He's a little worried too. Helen Perez and Anne Lopez live in Madrid, Spain. They can speak Spanish, English, and Japanese. They learned Japanese during their one-year homestay in Osaka, Japan. They lived with a Japanese family, went to a Japanese school, and pretty much lived their day-to-day -day life in Japanese for one year. When they went back to Spain, everything felt a little weird. The food didn't taste right anymore. It felt strange wearing their shoes inside. No one ever used chopsticks. They had a lot of reverse culture shock and had a lot of fun noticing the differences between the two countries. Whenever they missed Japan, they call each other and speak in Japanese on the phone. They are two stray cats named Vince and Vicky that live on the streets of Shanghai, China. One chilly winter evening, Vince and Vicky found a cozy cardboard box behind a friendly noodle shop. They nestled together, sharing their warmth and dreams of another adventurous day ahead. As winter's chill set in, Vince and Vicky discovered an old blanket left out by a caring passerby. It became their warm haven, a small comfort in the midst of their streetwise adventures. One evening, a kind-hearted stranger left a bowl of warm milk by their newfound shelter. Vince and Vicky laughed it up with gratitude, their eyes reflecting the flickering city lights. Our names are Dan and Jan, and we're really into fitness. In the last year, we've really stepped up our game too. We wake up incredibly early and go for a 5 km jog together. To keep it interesting, we make it a race, and the loser has to carry the winner's books to school. During our lunch break, we hit the gym and lift weights. We can each bench press our own weight. Our muscles are huge. After school, we go to our different sport clubs and practice until we can barely move anymore. Of course, we do more than just exercise. We are also careful about what we eat. No fatty foods or sweets for us. It's all lean meats, vegetables, and the occasional fruit. Our names are Dylan Jenkins and Sam McDonald. We're 17 year old skateboarders. Unfortunately, skateboarding can get somewhat expensive when you do it as much as we do. We break around two boards every month, and that starts to add up. Our parents stopped giving us an allowance, so we had to get part time jobs. We got a job in the food court at the mall, 
we ended up spending a lot of time there and not making very much money, so we quit. Then we got a part-time job at a landscaping company. It's really hard work, but the pay is really good. We're making money, and the hard work gets us in shape, making us better skateboarders. Our names are Nellie Quinn and Linda Tripp. We used to be taxi drivers in Los Angeles, America. Unfortunately, the taxi industry dried up after everyone started buying automatic cars and using online driving services. There just wasn't a need for taxi drivers like us anymore. That's alright, though. Truth be told, we weren't in love with our jobs anyway. Both of us had always wanted to live in a rural area in Northern California. We'd been saving money for 15 years and decided to try our luck and leave the city. We bought a small farmhouse and started raising bees for honey. We sell our honey online. It's not famous or anything but we make enough to get by. It's a good life. Our names are Mr. Binky and Ms. Manny. We're rabbits. We've always lived out in the countryside. So we decided it was high time we took a trip to the city to see the sights. We hopped our way to London and had quite a few adventures on the way. The problem with London is that it's full of humans. Humans are large pink animals with patches of hair all over their bodies. They never look where they're going and are quite clumsy and dangerous. Rather than try to navigate through crowds of these massive beasts, we decided to sleep the day away in Big Ben and venture out at night. The city was quite beautiful at night, but as much as we love it, we don't think we'll go back. My name is Barney Chan. I'm 44 years old, and I used to be a sugar addict. It all started when I became a computer programmer. I was working late nights and needed candy and cola to keep me awake and focused. Then I started needing it just to feel normal. I gained 30 kilos, and I ended up always being tired. My company recommended that I see a fitness trainer, and they paid for the first 3 months of sessions. I lost 10 kilos in the first 3 months and also started to need sweets and cola less and less. After 6 months, I almost never ate candy and was on a very healthy diet and exercise regimen. That fitness trainer probably saved my life. His name is Casey Kasem. He is 13 years old and is just starting junior high school. He goes to a very big school, so he has lots of choices for extracurricular activities. He looked into a lot of things but landed on joining the media club. The media club does things like put on a news broadcast for the school in the morning make announcements over the speakers, and even print a school newspaper. Casey is most interested in podcasting. He listens to lots of sports podcasts and follows his favorite players on social media. This year he's going to work with an older student to learn how to make a podcast. 
Next year, he hopes to be hosting his own sports podcast. This year is Riku Devi's second year of high school, and she's thinking about quitting. Last year, Riku started a very successful social media account. She's been talking with celebrities and fashion experts from all over the world for a year. One of the designers in New York offered her an internship at her company. This is a big chance for Riku. She has always wanted to work in fashion, and now she has a chance to get an early start on her dreams. Her parents are against the idea. They think she should finish school and go to college. They believe she should follow a normal career path and not try to start her career so early. Ritu isn't sure what she's going to do yet. Its name is Sir Turbo, and it lives in a forest a little outside of Moscow, Russia. Turbo is an escapee from the circus. He ran away from the circus because it was hard work, and he hated the clowns. Last year, he narrowly escaped from a hunter the circus sent after him. Moscow has been getting a little warm for his taste. Though, he's a big bear, so the colder the weather, the more he likes it. He's decided to leave his cave and head north. He's going to go deep into Siberia. He will get as far away from people as possible. He's looking forward to spending time deep in nature and reconnecting with his roots. Most of all, He's looking forward to being as far away from clowns as possible. Their names are Alice Crowley and Cooper Smith. They're into their second year of college and are in two bands. Alice is the lead singer in both bands, Cooper plays the drums in one and the lead guitar in the other. Their bands are very popular with the local crowd, so they can book a lot of shows. They love putting on small concerts for their fans. They love it so much that they're doing it almost every night. The problem with putting on so many shows is that it doesn't leave much time to study. Music isn't the hardest thing to study, but it does require some effort. This semester, their grades are going to be very bad. They're very worried about what their parents will think. Our names are Click and Clock. We're swallows that live in San Juan, California, but every winter we fly over 9,600 kilometers to Goya, Argentina. We're getting ready to make our migration for the year. It takes a lot of time and effort to get ready for the long flight. We wake up at the crack of dawn and take to the skies at first light. We spend the whole day swooping and gliding, hunting bugs. We have to spend weeks just hunting and eating. We have to put on as much weight as possible because you can't stop for very long while you're migrating. During the day, we'll fly low and try to catch a snack while we're flying. At night, we fly high to stay safe. It's a busy time. My name is Brandy Kim. 
I'm 12 years old, and I live in a dormitory in Busan, South Korea. My family lives in my hometown, Seoul. I've been living in a dormitory for two years now, and I've really gotten the hang of it. I have a nice schedule that I stick to. I wake up early and iron my uniform, cook a nutritious breakfast of rice and fish, double check to make sure all my homework is in order, and then head to class. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I cook a big dinner with all of my friends in the shared kitchen, it's a lot of fun. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I eat alone and watch my TV shows. It's a strict schedule, but it keeps a healthy balance between school and life. His name is Billy Boyd. He's 22 years old and works at an animal shelter. He takes care of pets that people can't take care of anymore and tries to find new homes for them. He makes sure all the animals have clean cages, are healthy, and get enough exercise. In his free time, he volunteers with organizations that do a lot of environmental work. He spends a lot of time cleaning garbage off the side of the road, but sometimes he gets to do more extraordinary work. Last week, a pod of dolphins beached themselves on a beach just outside of his city. He and his fellow volunteers went to the beach and started helping the dolphins. They saved over 100 dolphins. Her name is Elsa Janet Kingsley. She lives in Ottawa, Canada. She's getting ready for her next big ski trip up in the mountains. This year, her parents have rented a big cabin near the mountain. Elsa and five of her friends are going to stay in the cabin and hit the slopes early for the next three days. Elsa's parents are a little worried because the kids will have less supervision than in the years before. They're going to go over the rules and safety procedures every morning. Elsa is a little annoyed by all of the preparation, but she did break her arm last year, so she understands. She's planning on going down the trail where she broke her arm again. She's going to get it right this time. Its name is Jinx. It is a boa constrictor. Jinx has lived a long and prosperous life and has grown to be 4 meters long. It is so large and heavy that it's hard for it to climb trees and rest in them. Back in the day, it would lounge in the tops of trees all day and hunt from up there. It would even go looking for birds' nests to eat their eggs. Now, a bird's egg is barely a mouthful, and it doesn't even waste its time trying to find them. It has to eat bigger things, like wild deer and boar. The other day it was feeling a little hungry and went to the stream to see if it could catch some food. An alligator tried to eat it, but Jinx was stronger than the alligator. In the end, Jinx ate the alligator. Their names are Jace Windu and Luke Skywalker. They're 23-year-old Olympians. Two years ago, they became gold medalists in surfing at the Olympics. 
They became national stars and went on TV shows, securing numerous sponsorships from various sports companies and retailers. They've been very busy with their newfound fame. Both of them were very smart and invested their money wisely. Now, neither of them ever has to work again. Jay still loves surfing and goes to the beach to practice every day. Luke got married, and his wife is pregnant. He still goes on talk shows and does events with Jace, but he doesn't surf. He's starting to gain a little weight. Our names are Mindy and Cindy Silva. We're 10-year-old twins from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Even though we're twins, we're not very similar. We both enjoy different books, movies, and have very different friends. There's one thing we both love, video games. We love video games so much that we both saved up our money and bought our own video game consoles. One of us got an Xbox, and the other got a Switch. We're normally not good at sharing, but we each spend time on each other's console, and it doesn't bother us. Tomorrow, there will be some new downloadable content for one of our favorite games. We're so excited we can barely sleep. My name is Kelly Clarkson. I live in Kansas City, America. I'm 12 years old. I've been taking guitar lessons for a year and some change now, and... Speaking frankly, I hate it. I love listening to the guitar. I love listening to music. I love watching people play the guitar, but I hate going to my guitar lessons. I absolutely loathe practicing the guitar every night. I wish I had never convinced my parents to buy this stupid thing. I wish I had never begged them to get me a guitar tutor. We paid for two years worth of guitar lessons. I have to go once a week for the next eight months. My guitar teacher is nice. He understands that I don't like the guitar and doesn't get mad at me. Keith Ledger is a 16-year-old New Yorker. If there's one thing Heath loves, it's the beach. That's why he's so excited about turning 16. Now that he's 16, he can get his driver's license, borrow his parents' car, and drive to nice beaches outside of the city. He just turned 16 so he doesn't have his driver's license yet. He picked up all the study books from the school library and has been studying all weekend. He has already scheduled his tests online and is going to take it this weekend. After he passes his test, he'll get a learner's permit so he can practice driving with his parents. When he's ready, he'll take a driving test pass it, and then it's off to the beach. Caitlyn Jenner is a 32-year-old dentist who works for Doctors Without Borders. She's not a doctor, she's a dentist. She's been working with Doctors Without Borders for three years. She's a very hard worker and is very passionate about her work, so she's been rising in the ranks in the organization. 
Not only does she fix people's teeth, but she also organizes important events and meets with local leaders. Next month, she's going to meet with the president of Ethiopia. They're going to talk about what the government can do to help improve dental health in the country. Caitlin is a little nervous, so she's been practicing her presentation for two weeks. Rocky, the white-tailed deer, roamed the North American forests freely. Each day, he explored new places, nibbled on fresh green leaves, and played with other deer friends. One sunny morning, he met Rosie, a doe, by a sparkling stream. They became fast friends, staying together through thick and thin. As winter came, Rocky and Rosie helped each other find food and warmth. They protected each other from dangers. Their friendship grew strong. When spring arrived, they welcomed their fawns together. Rocky was happy because he found a true friend in Rosie, and their forest adventures continued, hand in hoof. They lived happily ever after. Their names are Dom and Barry. Dom is the cat, and Barry is the mouse. They've had a lot of good times together. It's been almost a year since Dom last saw Barry. Dom misses Barry a lot. He misses chasing him through the house and the garden. Dom's new house doesn't have a single mouse. Dom just lays around all day, gazing listlessly out the window, remembering the good old days. Barry, on the other hand, is very happy Dom is gone. The new couple in his house doesn't have a cat. Barry stays quiet and comes out at night. He goes through the trash and eats a lot of food. Barry has never had life so easy. He never wants to see a cat again. He doesn't miss Dom. Our names are Ben Kingsley and Cody Holt. We live in Boston, America, and we're 54 years old. Our grandkids got us into computers a few years ago, and now we can't live without them. At first, we just used them to check the weather and read the news, but now we're totally online. We started playing simple puzzle games about 6 months ago, and now we're getting into online tournaments. We even have our own Twitch channel so people can watch us play our video games. No one watches us, and we use it mostly to talk to our kids and grandkids while we play video games with them, but it's still a fun hobby. It's hard to imagine life without computers. I'm Dribbles McWolf, a wolf who lives in the woods. One day, I got curious and decided to explore the nearby town. It was bustling with activity unlike the quiet forest. As I watched the kids at the school, I noticed them reading books. I wanted to understand the scribbles on paper too. So, I joined a friendly librarian's reading program. With practice, I learned to read. It was amazing. I could read about adventures in faraway places. But, over time, 
I started missing my peaceful forest home. With a heart full of memories and newfound knowledge, I said goodbye to my town friends and returned to the calm of the woods, cherishing both worlds.